Welcome to Always Moving Forward with Renette. Moving, moving forward. Welcome, welcome, and happy Sunday to all. This is the day that the Lord has made. Be glad and rejoice in it. Welcome to Always Moving Forward with Renee and friends. My friends are Lenore and Noni. But before we get started today, let's give a few minutes to the great Aretha Franklin. Absolutely, she deserves it. Yes, yes. You know, if you'd like to say a little something about it, because we lost a good, a good voice here. My a good favorite person. singer of all time. All I, times. I would just like to wish the Queen of Soul uh, that we know to be absent in the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Yes. And I know he is well pleased with the work that she did and the legacy that she left for you. For us, we love you, Riri. Yes, yes, yes. well you. said, well said. But before we get started, you know I must give a shout out to our sponsors. Speed Flow Investment Club, where you can invest a small amount of $20 and reap a forever income. They can be reached at 248-721-1256. And United Success Network, the world's first and only social media network. For more information, call 313-282-4455. When contacting our sponsors, remember to tell them you heard it on Always Moving Forward show. You never know what kind of discount they might give you. We can't forget Mr. Antoine Bell, CEO of Bell Global Network. He makes it possible for us to be with you each and every Sunday. First Timothy, fifth chapter, eighth verse. But if anyone, anyone, does not provide for his relatives and especially for the members of his household. Mm. He has denied the faith and is worse, worse than an unbeliever. Wow. Okay. Our topic today is being a caregiver. Caring for a family member or close friend is one of the most important and complicated roles you'll play you'll ever play. And, and we all know that, right ladies? Yes. Because we've yes. been in that position. Yes. But 65% of most older persons with long-term care, they rely exclusively on family. Another 30% will supplement family care with assistance from paid providers. 50% of the elderly who have long-term care, but no family available to care for them. Mm -hmm. Where are they? In nursing homes. Mm -hmm. While only 7% who have a family caregiver are in institutional settings. Women provide the majority of care for spouses, mm -hmm. parents, mm -hmm. in-laws, friends, and neighbors. So we work hard all the oh, time. Yes. <laughs> Whether you are just beginning to anticipate a need or you are currently taking care of a family member full time, today we will give you some practical tools to make the process easier for both you and your loved one. So grab some paper and pencil because you will want to take notes. You don't want to miss anything that you're going to hear today. But I want you to remember, as you travel your caregiving journey, just take it one step at a time. Ladies, I know caregiving is uncomfortable. But when is it the right time to start that conversation about your loved one's wishes? 
Well, um, for me, my husband, my husband told me way ahead of time his wishes. So I knew, we talked about it like years, years before. Mm -hmm. um, so I already knew when he made his transition what his wishes were. And like I have, I have uh, five sisters and my mom's 90 years old. And so she's, she's expressed to all of us what her wishes are. Mm -hmm. And one of my sisters said, well, it's time to call the meeting for mom. It's time for us to call the meeting and find out where, you know, all the paperwork is, you know, what would she like for us to do. So I don't, I, I don't think there's a set time, you know, to discuss it. I think it just kind of comes up when, when things come up. Okay, well, what do you think? No. Well, I think that uh, <coughs> uh, I agree with Lenora, what she's saying, that there comes a point in time where the family has to sit down and have a family meeting so that they can determine the wishes of that person that is going to need um, health care. And most times it takes such a long time for families to really get to that point because I feel in, in many cases they're denying or they feel that they can do it. But it becomes a point where you have to get outside help, if, especially if the person is working or they have other issues that they can't accommodate the wishes or the needs of that person that um, need caregiving. So the first thing is to have a family meeting. So then you can see if you can get family to commit to doing what needs to be done. Well, we're going to get into that, but let's just talk about to have that time mm -hmm. with that loved one. Okay. Because, you know, it can be hard because some people, they don't want to admit right. that they need help. Right. They don't That's want true. to admit that. And I know when um, my husband, brother and I, we were caregivers for my mother. You know, mm -hmm. she told us her wishes. Mm -hmm. okay. She said, don't put me in a home. Mm -hmm. Don't put me in a home. So we knew what we had to do. Okay. You know, whatever it was, we knew what we had to do. But, you know, it can be hard. And that is a good time where you can make that person comfortable if they're not accepting their illness. By bringing in family, a family member, you may have to bring in a good friend, the doctor, and or the pastor. Yes. Because the caregiver eventually will need, like you all are talking about, bringing in, bringing in a team, some support mm -hmm. that will help them. But you know, those of you who have been a caregiver, did you form a team for help? Because we know it's hard to go yes. it alone. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. You know, did you form a team? You said your sisters. Well, for my husband, I was the team. Okay. But I have cared here for other people. For my aunt, she had a team. Mm -hmm. you know, there was people that came in, like the uh, physical therapist, the nurse came in, and before they left, they would, they would uh, talk with me and let me know, you know, her situation and you know what was done for that day so I can relate it back to her daughter, you know, who was in California at the time, right, coming right. back and forth because she lived in California, her mom is here in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And she had to go back and forth and she had to rely on people. And that's very hard. That was very hard for her to have to rely on people. Yeah. And you gotta get somebody you can trust. You gotta get somebody you oh, can trust. Yeah, yeah. But if you can't trust them, uh, yeah, that wouldn't be a good thing. <laughs> well, I know with my dad, my dad, I had to go to Alaska to get my dad because he didn't want to go into a nursing home. And his, yeah. his family up there did not want, weren't giving him the care that he needed. Mm -hmm. So he called me, daughter, come mm -hmm. and get me. Yeah. Come and get me by Monday. Gave me two days to get up there to get him or, or they're going to put him in a nursing home. Oh. So I did do that. So I was his caregiver. but. Uh, there were a lot of issues that I ran up mm -hmm. into as far as being his legal guardian and mm -hmm. signing the legal papers. I made the decision not to do it because he lived in the state of Alaska. He's here visiting with me. So I just let his family in Alaska uh, take yeah. on that. But when he was here with me, I did what I could, make sure he see the proper doctors, mm -hmm. make sure he got medical attention, proper food. And also, as a, I, I was a caregiver for a good friend of mine, I'm not going to mention her name, but um, I stepped in where maybe family didn't step in right, or was right. working or couldn't do. Mm -hmm. I was there for her to make sure she was bathed, make sure she was 
eating, make sure laundry was done, mm -hmm. different things. It was tried a, a, quite a bit, but at that time I made the commitment to help her as best I could. Right, mm -hmm. right. Well, we formed a small team. Mm -hmm. Again, my team uh, consisted of my brother, my husband, myself, and my cousin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a small team. Great. Uh, but then my brother got sick. So we had to take care of him as well. And, and we were going around the clock. Yeah. And, and it's really, you know, being a caregiver, it does a lot to you. Oh, yes. It does a lot to you. Yes. But, you know, if anyone needs prayer or you just want to let us know mm -hmm. that you watched our show today, you can call or text us at 313-657-5556. Or you can always email us at gwealths111 at gmail.com. We can be seen every Sunday, every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. on Comcast Channel 20 Detroit. Or you can go to at any time in the convenience of your home, your car, you can look us up on YouTube, or you can go to bgntvgospel.com. And you know, search for Always Moving Forward. You know, we'll be there for you. But, you know, ladies, did you know, because I did, but the average age of a caregiver is 49. And that 49-year-old is a female. Mm. Did you know that? That early, mm -hmm. when we start taking care of family members, mm -hmm. friends, like you said, mm -hmm. you know, our spouse and everyone. But, man, I haven't forgot about you. I know yeah. that you do provide assistance, yes. but it usually falls on who? Yes. The female. We spend... 50% more time than a male in caring for, you know, the person, yes. our loved one. Yes. But tell me, do you know if caregivers get paid? Yes, they get paid. Okay, they get paid? Mm -hmm. well, they get paid? It depends. Okay. It, it, depends it, it depends on, it depends okay. on what, they, what, that, what that person that they're taking care of. You know, if you have Medicaid, you can get paid by the state of Michigan. Yes, yes. And it's not bad pay either, from what I'm hearing. It's not bad. You know, some insurances take pay for that. Oh, okay. If you have Aflac. <laughs> Aflac. They take care of that. Okay, too. there's a little plug now. No, no, I don't have Aflac. By but but I'm just saying, there's a plug. Okay, yeah. There's Seriously. a plug, so she may be telling you, get Aflac. I, well, yeah, you know, I, 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 but there, there are also some do people it. that um, have in their budget, they can provide mm -hmm. outside of Absolutely. what the uh, insurance will do. Because mm -hmm. some people need 24-hour care, and um, you know, some people are willing to pay for it. It all depends if the family sets up that team and say, well, we want extra care for mom outside of what the insurance is doing, then they provide for it. And, they and that can be very expensive. Um, you know, oh, yes, it can. Yes. When the family's paying for uh, someone to come in and give outside care for their loved ones. Because I have a friend who was in that situation and there were four or five other people, but just one person went into their pockets to pay the person for coming in to look after their mom. Mm -hmm. And it could be, and, it could, it's, and it's not cheap. It's, no, it's right. quite expensive. Because, you know, that's what we did. Mm -hmm. We, the family, our team, mm -hmm. pulled together mm -hmm. so that we could pay <clears throat> my cousin. Yes. You know to watch my mother because we were still work. working. That's the problem. We were still mm -hmm. working. I think that's only fair. Right, you know, right. I don't think you it know. should be left on one particular, one person because mom is in the house with me. I'm just giving an example. Uh, I don't think it should be left <coughs> on one person because mom's in, or mom or dad's in the house with mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm taking, you know, I'm giving all the caregiving. I'm doing everything. And then I've got four or five brothers and sisters that's going on about their life. Because that can be very difficult. It's emotional. It's draining. Right, right. You know, especially if you're working too, and then you got to dip in your pockets and 
your other family members aren't coming up with anything. It's just on one person. It can be really, really hard. Right, right. Now, I know we have some resources, and, you mm -hmm. know, you may can't get to it now, but if you can. I can. Uh, you know, where can they contact someone regarding payment? Oh, well. Do you have that? Well, no, no, I don't have it, but I can tell you. Department, okay. Department of Health and Human Services. Department of Health and Human Services, yes. exactly. You can contact that first and see if that person might be eligible for some benefits. Um, that's the first thing that they can do. Mm -hmm. that's the to me, that's the first thing. Okay. And you know, uh, Renee, there's a lot of agencies out here who are willing to give support to the Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. They will give additional yeah. support, especially if a person has a life-threatening disease or something. Okay. There are a lot of organizations that will also give um, assistance for those persons who are suffering from cancer and, and um, provide them with some additional resources as well. Okay. You can contact the Michigan Office of Services for Seniors. Uh, they offer a variety of senior services. The phone number is area code 517-373-8230. Okay, and that's located, you were saying? I think that number, that's a 517 in Lansing, but there's also local agency, the, um, the Area um, Council on Aging. I don't have that number because I have all um, resources for websites where okay. they can go and look at, which I'll share with you in a moment. Okay. Okay, I know that <clears throat> going back to when is it a good time to have that conversation, I told, like you said, uh, was it your husband told you all yes. along what he wanted? And I told my family, mm -hmm. you know, what I want. If something happens to me, because I know being a caregiver, it's a lot on you. Yes. It's a lot it on is. you. It is. It's a whole lot. And, and I told my family, it's okay. Okay. Send me to a home. That's me. That's you. Okay. Okay, that's me. I don't want to put the burden. Okay. I've been a caregiver. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to put it on anyone else. And it's a lot. You know, right. It's a lot. It is a lot. I took care of my husband. It's a lot. It's stressful. It's a lot. Oh. Right. You know, Very but let me live out the rest of my years. You know, they'll come and see me. I'll be flying the home. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know how I am. I'll. You walk around there with your pumps on. <laughs> and, then, and, then, you have, and then you have those, like, um, um, my daughter told me, she said, she kind of caught me off guard, you know? Mm -hmm. And we were having a conversation, and she goes, oh, yeah, Ma, let me tell you this. I was thinking, now, when you, if you get sick or something like that, I'm just going to have to put you in the nursing home because my <laughs> work, my work, yeah. and, you know, I'm going to come and see you. I'm going to yeah. come and visit you, like, twice or twice or Mom, oh, no, 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 she oh, to do. I'm, I'm looking at her like, what? <laughs> but well, she was serious about it. And what do you want me to do with your dog? See, people don't think, like, you know, seniors have pets. You yes, know what I'm saying? Yes. And what do you want me to do with, 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 with smoke? So I said, well, if I get in that situation, you got to put them down because then nobody going to take care of them like I do. Yeah. So I don't want you, you know, taking them for a ride or because I've seen it done. Or, you know, just leaving them outside and all that. So just put them down. Put them down. And so she knows that's my wish. That's what I mean that. Okay. I'm serious. Because nobody's going to take care of that pet right, like I do. Right. And so, but I was just stunned. I, I thought about it. I said, that's how you going to do me? Mama ain't got time to be taking I got to work. <laughs> so you know you? That's one of the okay. big issues in caregiving. Well, well, let me just say that. Uh -oh. We'll be in the home together. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. I don't know. I have some, uh, some concerns <laughs> about some homes. My aunt was in a nursing home, yeah. and she went in there because she was being um, neglected, and uh, Adult Protective Service got involved because I had to call them because mm. I couldn't get her, her granddaughter to do. And my aunt passed away in the nursing home. She fell, broke her hip, and it was, I'm not going to mention the name, but it was a, it was a, a really horrible nursing home. Well, you know, you have to follow up on those. You've got to follow homes. up, yeah. up and, and those rehab there. facilities. You my really brother, do. my brother went into a rehab facility because he had a major stroke. Mm -hmm. yeah. My husband, he always tells people, I took better care of my brother uh -huh. 
in the rehab than I did my husband at home. Uh -oh. Because, oh, you, you know, did. in the rehab, yeah, in Talking the rehab, yes, okay. in the rehab, you can wear, you know, your clothes. Mm -hmm. and, and my brother was always sharp. I had him in all different types of <laughs> jogging think. suits mm -hmm. and, and everything. And uh, matter of fact, I moved him from one home to another okay. because they told me what they were going to do and they didn't do it. Okay, okay. And my brother looked at me and said, get me out of here. Uh, I said, you know what, I'm, yeah. you don't have to say it, I'm working yes. on it already. Mm -hmm. My husband and I walked mm -hmm. facilities okay. mm -hmm. until we found the one, mm -hmm. the one that we felt comfortable. I went there, because they're open, you can go 24 hours a day. Yes. And I would show up at any time. Yes, that's I told that's them best. don't wash his clothes, I would wash his clothes. Okay. You know, I told them don't do this mm -hmm. or don't do that. And we worked together as a team there. Right. I would call meetings mm -hmm. with the staff. Yes. Because yes. I wanted to know his progress. Absolutely, you were good. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to know his progress. Mm -hmm. And that's what the nurses told mm -hmm. me. The good. nurse said, if we had more family members like you, things would be totally different. Mm -hmm. Would be. Would be totally different. So if you have someone in a home, mm -hmm. make sure that it doesn't wind up like Noni's aunt. You know, you're there watching out for yes. that family member yes, or yes. that friend. Yes. But you know, now that you have formed the team, a plan needs to be put in place. Because mm -hmm. you get your team members together. And there should be one person in charge. Because you know, everybody want to do everything. Yeah, but there yeah. should be one person in charge yeah. Yeah. to determine who would be responsible, like you were talking about that earlier, you, well, somebody washed clothes and all like that. But they need to be given responsibilities mm -hmm. as to what they're going to do. Absolutely, you I know, agree with that. Absolutely, okay. And with my family, me, I'm the spokesperson when it comes to any medical stuff. Mm -hmm. When the doctor comes, you know, they'll say, mm -hmm. You know, talk right, to her, right. and she'll she'll break it down for us because mm -hmm. they don't you know sometimes they may not understand what the doctor's saying. Yeah, and they'll say just speak to her. She's the one, and then she'll tell us what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, and they'll okay. still sit in and listen, but he's directing it to me okay. because I nine times out of ten I understand everything he's saying. Right. So you gotta have like some type of uh, like you say every night, you know, some kind of organization with everybody. One person do this for me. I have four sisters. It's five of us, all women. And so it, it should be easy for one person to do this for mine, one person to do that for mine, mm -hmm. and so on, you know? Right, right. But, you know, let me just say this one. I, I found this scripture. Song 71st chapter, 9th verse. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Yes. Forsake me not mm -hmm. when my strength is spent. Okay, let's not forget when they get old. Yes. Because you know they say uh, a lot of times when uh, you get to that age, they say twice a child and once an adult. Because we don't have time to talk about, you, you know, the different ailments That's true. that uh, our loved one can have. But what are some, some other roles that the team can do? Example, you know, like the meals, paying bills, and Absolutely. you know, things like that. One real important thing that we have to talk about is the end of life wishes. Making sure if there's any wills, any uh, assets, who's gonna be the executor, and who's gonna um, be the person responsible for the estate, um, right, death. And we need to consider all those things, and we need to have that in place because it's, it can be very chaotic at the end when someone Absolutely. you're going through grief and you've got all this yes. to do. But Absolutely. if you pre-plan it and have it all ready, it just makes that transition a little smoother. So do your best, be the best caregiver you can be, and take some of this advice we're giving, and, and it'll make it a lot easier for you. Right, right. And and you know, above all. Again, that caregiver must take care of themselves. Yes. They've got to take care of themselves. Yes. Yep. You know, when I was caregiving 
for my mother and brother. I felt guilty, a little guilty sometimes when I wanted to take time for myself. Yeah, me too. You know, I felt guilty. Me too. But one, one must, you know, they got to find that time because stress will do it to you. And it's a lot when you're taking care of someone. Yeah, because sometimes, like, you don't want, like for me, um, I didn't really want to take a, they call it a respite, respite, rest. I, you know, the, the, the hospice nurse told me, well, we need for you to take a break. Would you like to go pay a bill? Or would you like to go, you know, go for a ride or go right. shopping? I'm like, I, I don't want to do that because I don't want to leave them. Yeah. You know, yeah. what about, you know, because you ain't going to take care of them like I'm going to take care of them. That's right. That's right. But I was depressed. Uh, it was very emotional for me. I was pooped out. I was totally tired. When I did go, she said, why don't you just go to the store and get some at the market? And I'm like, oh, okay. So I went out, I went to the supermarket. And uh, but while I was gone, you know, I was totally worried. I think I was gone maybe half an hour because I was totally, it was very emotional for me. Right. You know, taking care of someone, you know, being a caregiver yes. to someone that you love, family, it's very hard, you know. Mm -hmm. And when you leave, if you go out, you want to make sure that person is 100% Okay, right. And you know, when you come back, everything gonna be the same way you left it, and there gonna be no issues. Like, you know, if he looked for me or she looked for you, you know, mm -hmm. call your name out. You know, to that person you're leaving them with, uh, be able to handle that, to be able to go in there and say, you know, to say the right things. Yeah, you know yes. what I'm saying. That's right. So that is very draining. It's emotional. It's depressing. And uh, one thing about going into caregiving, you cannot go into caregiving with an attitude or you know, when you go in and take care of that person, you got to leave all your problems outside the door. Because when you come in, you got to be able to give all your attention to that person that you're caring for. You yeah, know? but like she said, leave those problems outside the door. But our time is running out, but we want you to know. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. Uh, we want you to know that God loves you, and so do we. And remember to always keep moving forward. And we'll see you next week. Enjoy always moving forward with Renee. Moving, moving Everybody, this is your girl Vicky Wines, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. It Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network.